Okay. Good evening, guys. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Shaurya. Good evening, Prince. Good evening, everyone. Sethi Usman. Good evening. Good evening, Harsh. What you guys are all doing? Chatting in the live session. You guys are knowing each other. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay, guys. Now in this today's class. Let's begin with the cardiology. Okay, let's begin with the cardiac cycle. Okay. Now, in yesterday's class, what we have discussed? In last class, we have discussed about the hemostasis, how the blood is going to clot. Now, in this class, I will be mainly discussing. Okay, I will be mainly discussing about the cardiac cycle. What are the different stages in the cardiac cycle? I hope you guys have shared this in your class 11th and 12th also. But here, I am going to go. And add minor details. Okay, I'm going to add even minor details. Having said that, without any further late. Okay, without any further late. Now let's begin the topic: cardiac cycle. Now, cardiac cycle. Okay. Cardiac cycle. Sir. Now, it's a cycle, right? It's a cycle. So, wherever you start, for example, I say there are seven phases or eight phases in the cardiac cycle. Now, you start from any phase. Okay, you start from any phase, the same events are going to repeat again and again. Again and again. Okay. Now, broadly speaking, cardiac cycle is divided into how many phases? Okay, cardiac cycle is divided into how many phases? Two phases, systole and diastole. Systole is a contraction. Diastole is a relaxation of the heart. Okay, I will explain you. But before going that, I want you to understand a simple diagram of the heart. Okay, we have to draw the heart in a simple way. These are the four chambers in the heart. These are the four chambers in the heart. This is right atria, right ventricle, left atria, left ventricle, left atria, left ventricle. Okay, okay. Now, what is the wall which is present over here? Between left atria and left ventricle, what is the wall which is present over here? This wall is called as a mitral wall, mitral wall. What is the wall which is present between right atria and right ventricle? This wall is called as tricuspid wall. It's called as a tricuspid wall. It's called as a tricuspid wall. Okay. So, what is this blood vessel that I am drawing here? What is this blood vessel that is coming out of the left ventricle? The blood vessel which is coming out of the left ventricle is called as the iota. Iota. And the blood vessel which is coming out of the right ventricle, this blood vessel is called as pulmonary trunk. Okay. So I am showing the heart in a simple way. Right atria, left atria, right ventricle, left ventricle. And from the left ventricle, iota is coming. The blood vessel, iota is coming. And from the right ventricle, pulmonary trunk is coming. Okay. Pulmonary trunk is coming. Now, what is this wall which is present over here? The wall which is present over here. So, this is your aortic wall. This is aortic wall. What is the wall which is present over here? This is the pulmonic wall. Pulmonic wall. So, both this aortic wall and pulmonic wall together, they are called as semilunar walls. Okay, they are called as what? They are called as semilunar walls, aortic wall and pulmonic wall. They are called as what? Semilunar walls. Now, what are these walls? So, the mitral wall and tricuspid wall. So, this mitral wall, okay, this one and the tricuspid wall. Let me take some other color. So, yes, this mitral wall and here on this side, tricuspid wall, these walls. The mitral wall and tricuspid wall, they are called as atrioventricular walls. They are present between where? They are present between the atria and ventricles. So, these walls are called as AB walls, atrioventricular walls. Walls. Atrioventricular walls. So, what else you should know before discussing about the cardiac cycle? What else you should know is, sir, in the iota, who is there? Blood is there. Always in the iota, blood will be there. Okay, always in the iota, blood will be there. So, now heart 
is not contracting. Now the heart is not contracting. Heart is just like that. Okay. Heart is just like that. Heart is not contracting. Okay. It, are you guys able to see whatever I am writing? Is it coming over here? I think there is a small delay. Why right, there is a small delay? Sweet. Writing here, but why it is not shown over there? Just one minute, guys. There is some technical issue. Just one minute. One minute. Okay, last one is right here. Start this, sir. Okay, done. Okay, done. So, okay, guys, uh, just tell me if there is an issue in the comment section. Okay, just tell me if there is an issue. Uh, now, the problem is solved. Okay, the problem is solved. Now, everything is okay. Okay, done. So, look. So, here the iota, sir. Here the iota. Okay, here the iota. In the iota, who is there? So, in the iota, there is blood present. Here, there is blood present, sir. Now, this blood is having some pressure, sir. Is having some pressure. Now, the heart is not contracting. When the heart is not contracting, do you know the, what is the pressure in the iota? The pressure here in the iota is 80 mm Hg. Okay, the pressure in the iota is 80 mm Hg, sir. Cool, right? Next. So, we have seen the right atria, left atria, right ventricle, left ventricle, the mitral wall, tricuspid wall, pulmonic wall, and aortic wall. And also, I have explained that the pressure in the iota when the heart is not contracting, when the heart is not contracting, the pressure in the iota is 80 mm Hg. Okay. Now, let me show you the phases of the cardiac cycle. They go guys here. The phase of the cardiac cycle. So, cardiac cycle is divided into how many phases? Totally eight phases. Totally eight phases. 
What are the eight phases in the cardiac cycle? There are eight phases in the cardiac cycle. What are the eight phases in the cardiac cycle? Okay, now let me tell you one by one. So, mainly the cardiac cycle into two broad, broadly two phases. That is the systole and diastole. The systole and diastole are having eight subphases. Okay, see they go in the systole. There is isovolumetric contraction. There is rapid ejection phase, slow ejection phase. In the diastole, in the diastole, there is protodiastole, isovolumetric relaxation, rapid ventricular filling, slow filling, and atrial contraction. So, how many phases are there totally in a cardiac cycle? There are eight phases are there in the cardiac cycle. In the systole, there are three subphases present. In the diastole, there are eight subphases present. Three subphases and eight subphases in the systole as well as diastole. Okay. Three subphases in the systole and uh, sorry, five subphases. Three, three subphases in the systole and five subphases. One, two, three, four, five. Five subphases in the dash. Totally eight phases. Now, I have already explained to you that it's a cycle. It's a cycle, cardiac cycle. For wherever you start, for example, now I want to start with slow ejection phase. For example, if I start with slow ejection phase, what is the next phase that's going to come? It's a protodiastole. If I start with, for example, if I start explaining you with atrial contraction, Okay, if I start explaining you with atrial contraction, what is the next stage that's going to begin? It's the isovolumetric contraction. So, it's a cycle, sir. It's a cycle. Remember that one thing. See, for easy understanding purpose, for easy understanding purpose, I will start with this phase, atrial contraction. Atria is contracting. Guys, first thing which I what I want you to know is, which I want to put into your mind is, Sateko, cardiac cycle is being divided into systole and diastole. Systole means contraction, diastole means relaxation. You read, right? So, which is stole, atrial systole or ventricular systole? I am always, always concerned about the ventricles only, not the atria. Here, systole means it is the ventricular systole. It is the ventricular systole. Diastole means it is a ventricular diastole. I am not concerned about the atria. See, actually, they go, they go. Atrial systole or atrial contraction. Atrial contraction, it is a phase of what, sir? It is a phase of diastole, actually. Okay, it's a phase of diastole, sir. Atrial contraction is a phase of diastole. Okay. So, remember, here the systole is for ventricular systole. Diastole is for the ventricular diastole. Now, having said that, for easy understanding, let me start the topic with atrial contraction. First, atria is contracting. So, what happens? One by one phase, I will explain you. Look here. So, look. In this, look here. So, I am starting with the phase 8. I am starting with this. Okay. Atrial systole. Now, there you go, guys. This is the image you already know it. I have explained you this image. Right. So, now the atria are contracting. So, this plus symbol. Wherever I use the plus symbol, it means contraction. Atria are contracting. When the atria are contracting, guys, they go. When the atria are contracting, what happened to these walls? These walls are open in stage. So they are already open in stage. They are open. Okay. When the atria are contracting, now how much percent blood is coming into the ventricles? 30 percent blood is going to come into the ventricles. Okay. 3, 0. 30 percent blood is going to come into the ventricles. Not 100 percent blood is coming. So, due to atrial contraction, how much blood is falling into the ventricles? 30 percent blood is going to fall into the ventricles. Look into the ventricles already. 70 percent of blood is already there, sir. Here 70 percent is there, here 70 percent, already 70 percent blood is there. Due to atrial contraction, from where that 70 came, from where that 70 came, I will explain you later. Okay, I will explain you later. Just now, look, sir, when atria are contracting, okay, when atria are contracting, 70 percent blood is going to, sorry, it's not 70 percent, 30 percent blood is going to fall into the ventricles. Okay, so that's why they go here, contribute only 30 percent filling of ventricles, atrial systole. Now, due to contraction of this atria, due to contraction of this atria, you can hear a sound that is S4. So, S4 heart sound is heard during, you know, right, S1, S2. Now, in this MBBS, you will study of, about S3, S4 also. Some other sounds are also there, like ejection, click, opening, snap. You will study them. But atrial contraction allows 30% filling of the ventricles. During this, you can hear S4 heart sound. During this, you can hear the S4 heart sound, sir. Okay. Next. 
after atrial systole what is the next stage you tell me after atrial systole in the image i have shown you sir after atrial systole or atrial contraction the next stage that is going to come is isovolumetric contraction that is going to come is isovolumetric contraction now let us begin with the isovolumetric contraction look here now isovolumetric contraction now what is happening okay there you go guys this is the same heart that i am showing you this is the same heart now here already 70 percent blood is there you know it okay already 70 percent blood is there okay now that 30 percent have added because of atrial contraction now how much blood is there here 100 percent blood is there now ventricles are filled okay ventricles sir, have received all the blood all the blood do you know how much amount of blood will be there in the ventricles so that 70 and 30 percent together how much sir in the left ventricle in the right ventricle both the ventricles they will have almost 120 to 140 ml of blood in both the ventricles sir not just in like you know uh, not <coughs> together not together in right ventricle there will be 120 in left ventricle there will be 120 okay so your ventricles are going to have almost 120 to 140 ml of blood so this value is value okay it's value go um what we call it exactly so this value is called as pre load or endastolic volume so this blood is called as endastolic volume how much is the endastolic volume 120 ml to 140 ml how much blood you are keeping in the ventricles 120 to 140 ml of blood you are keeping into the ventricles okay done sir now look at this so this walls are closed these walls are closed now you can ask me sir why these walls are closed sir this is the mitral wall it is closed this is the mitral wall this is closed and this is what so this is the tricuspid wall it is also closed do you know why sir use your logic this is your ventricle okay this is the ventricle now it have received its blood it got its blood sir it's filled with the blood 100 percent blood it got it 120 to 140 ml of blood preload is there our endastolic volume is there okay now what it have to do it have to contract right the ventricle have to contract the ventricle have to contract it have to push the blood into where it have to push the blood into the iota it have to push the blood into the iota sir you need to understand here in the iota the pressure is 80 mm hg the baseline pressure is 80 mm hg do you know in the ventricle the pressure is 5 mm hg okay the pressure in the ventricle is 5 mm hg the pressure in the iota is 80 mm hg now tell me sir to open this aortic wall you have to increase the pressure you have to generate here how much you have to generate a pressure of 81 above 80 you have to generate pressures more than 80 then only this aortic wall is going to open blood is going to come into the iota okay blood is going to come into the iota so now what i am trying to put into your mind is sir ventricle it got its blood 120 to 140 ml of blood now Ventricle started to contract. Ventricle started to contract. Just beginning. They go just beginning. Ventricle started to contract. When the ventricles, when they are started to contract, so what happens is here the pressure started to increase. Here the start pressure started to increase. Now to prevent the regurgitation, the blood have to go in this direction, sir. The blood have to go in this direction. Not in this direction. To prevent the regurgitation of blood. To prevent the regurgitation of blood back into the atria, immediately these walls, what are these walls? The mitral wall and the tricuspid wall, the mitral and the tricuspid walls, the mitral and the tricuspid walls, they are going to close immediately, like this. Now, when the mitral and tricuspid wall, when they are closed, that will cause a first heart sound, that is going to create a sound, Deco. now it is create a, creating a sound called as S1 heart sound, okay? So, ventricle have started to contract. When the ventricle started to contract to prevent the regurgitation of blood into the atria, the atrioventricular walls, the mitral wall and tricuspid wall, both are closed, leading to the S1 heart sound. So, now tell me, S1 heart sound is due to closure of, is due to closure of mitral wall and tricuspid wall. Okay, M1, T1, we write like M1, T1. What is M1, T1? So, mitral wall closed, tricuspid wall closed, causing first heart sound. So now you tell me, now you tell me guys. Sir, here, here, these walls are closed. Sir, the mitral valve is closed. The tricuspid valve is closed. And here the aortic valve is also in closed state. The pulmonic valves are also in closed state. All valves are closed state. Is there is any new blood coming into the ventricle? No. Is there is blood going out of the ventricle? No. 
So nothing is coming into the ventricle. Nothing is going out of the ventricle. Nothing is going in and nothing is coming out. So that's why this phase is called as what? This phase is called as isovolumetric contraction. That's why the name sir. Okay. So look here. Isovolumetric contraction. Okay. Isovolumetric contraction. So iso means what? Same. Iso means same. What is that thing same? Volume. The volume of blood in the ventricle. Nothing is coming in. Nothing is going out. Nothing is coming in. Nothing is going out. So isovolumetric contraction. Okay. So one by one important points. We will see this. Let's see the one by one points. Sir. Yeah. First heart sound. That's love. Okay. That's because of the contraction of mitral valve and tricuspid valve. One by one. Sir, so first of all, what is the point of? What is the point of this isovolumetric contraction? What is the purpose, sir? Ventricle. The ventricle have to contract. It have to generate more pressure. It have to generate more pressure to open what? To open what, sir? To open this aortic wall. It have to open the aortic wall on left side, and it have to open the pulmonic wall on right side. Guys, again and I'm again and again I'm telling you, see, I am only going to concentrate on the left side of the, of the heart. Okay, I'm going to concentrate mainly on the left side of the heart. So left side events. Whatever happens on the left side, same events will happen in right side. Same events. I will talk about the left side. Same events will happen in the right side also. Okay. Some pressure changes will be there, but forget about it. Whatever happens on the left side. Same events happens in right side also. Okay. Now, what is the purpose? Okay. What is the purpose? What is the purpose of isovolumetric contraction? The purpose of this phase is to open the aortic and pulmonic wall. You need to open this aortic wall and you need to open this pulmonic wall. Okay. What is happening during this phase? The rise in ventricular pressure. Now, ventricle started to contract in the beginning. Ventricle started to contract. The rise in ventricular pressure causes mitral and tricuspid valves the mitral and tricuspid valves to close so that's causing which sound that's causing the first heart sound yes one lump m1 t1 m1 t1 now once here once here the pressure is greater than 80 mm hg now it becomes 81 or to be very precise 80.1 just pressure increases more than 80 immediately what will happen the aortic valve is going to open when the aortic valve is open can you call it as isovolumetric contraction? Now, can you call it as isovolumetric contraction? No, it's not now isovolume. Blood is going out. So, what is the end point, sir? Tell me, what is the end point of isovolumetric contraction? It's the opening of aortic valve. Once aortic valve is opened, it is no longer isovolumetric contraction. Isovolumetric contraction will be completed. Okay. So, once the pressure raises above 80 mm Hg in the ventricle, aortic valve opens. Open okay. Iotic valve opens. So once aortic valve is opened, isovolumetric contraction is completed. So this phase ends by opening of aortic valve on the left side and opening of the pulmonic valve on the right side. So opening of these valves, once these valves are opened, they go. Once the aortic valve is opened, now what happens? Now with the high force, the blood is going to eject into the aorta. With heavy with high force. The blood is going to eject into the iota, sir. Okay. So, the blood is ejecting into the iota. This ejecting of the blood will cause ejection click. Okay. This ejecting of the blood, the ejection of the blood is going to cause the ejection click. Ejection click. So, whenever you hear this ejection click, which means the isovolumetric contraction is completed. When you hear the ejection click, Isovolumetric contraction is completed. What is ejection click? Opening of the aortic wall. Opening of the aortic wall will cause the rapid movement of the blood from the left ventricle into the aorta, which will cause a heart sound, which is called as ejection click. Okay, ejection click. Okay. That now after this, isovolumetric contraction completed. Isovolumetric contraction completed. After this isovolumetric contraction. Okay, after the isovolumetric contraction, what is the next phase? Next phase, look here, guys. They go. The next phase is rapid ejection phase. Okay, rapid ejection phase and slow ejection phase. Now I will discuss both rapid ejection phase and slow ejection phase. 
in one single side. In one single side, I will show both rapid ejection phase and slow ejection phase. But before that, before that, I want you to go through this once. There is a timeline diagram. So there is a timeline diagram. Okay. Now in this timeline diagram, I am talking about look. The cardiac cycle is divided into systole and diastole. Okay. Now I am discussing about the systole in this class. Like you know, now I am discussing about the systole. So systole, what is the first phase? Sir? In the systole, what is the first phase? Isovolumetric contraction. Isovolumetric contraction. In the beginning of the isovolumetric contraction, they go in the beginning, just isovolumetric contraction started. Immediately mitral valve tricuspid valve closed. In the mitral valve tricuspid valve, when they are they closed, they cause first heart sound. So in the beginning of the isovolumetric contraction, you heard first heart sound, yes one. And at the end of the isovolumetric contraction, you are hearing one more sound. What is it? It is ejection click. So isovolumetric contraction is a phase. It's a phase present between S1 and ejection click. Okay. Isovolumetric contraction is a phase which is present between S1 and ejection click. Now this ejection click is because of what? The ejection click is because of what, sir? The ejection click is because of opening of aortic wall. Opening of the aortic wall. Aortic wall opened, blood enters into the aorta, causing ejection click. Okay, causing ejection click, sir. Done. After isovolumetric contraction, what are the two phases in the systole? Rapid ejection phase, slow ejection phase. That I will discuss now about the rapid ejection and slow ejection phases. Okay, look here. There you go. Now, the aortic walls are opened. TK, the aortic walls are opened. Sir, so left, uh, left ventricle, you know, now it has generated a pressure of 81, for example. There you go. Now it has generated a pressure of 81. But left ventricle is a tough guy. He's not getting satisfied. Or even after getting results, you know, these girls will be there, like, you know, these boys, some boys will be there. Even after getting their marks, 90 marks, they'll be still crying that I don't get that 98 marks, sir. especially girls. So even after getting 98 marks, they'll be, they'll be like crying, sir, I didn't get that the two marks. The same way, ventricle is also not satisfied, sir. Okay, ventricle is also not satisfied. It have opened the aortic valve. Aortic valve is open. Okay. But, look. Ventricle, actually ventricle will be like this. See, imagine this is the ventricle. Imagine this is the left ventricle. Okay. Ventricle have to, I should say. So, first, this is the apex of the ventricle. So, this down part. Okay, look. Now, imagine this is your left ventricle. This is called as the apex. This is called as a base. Okay, apex and base. First, apex will contract. Sir. Apex first it will contract. Okay. Now, when the apex is contracting, when the ventricle is contracting, okay. When the apex is contracting, thick muscles are apex have thick muscles. So, the pressure will go from 81, it will go till to 120. Isovolumetric contraction, ventricle is contracting. The first apex will contract. The first apex will contract. Apex is having a bulkier muscle, big muscle. So, the pressure will go up till 120. So, aortic valve is open. Here the pressure is now 120. Here the pressure always in the aorta, the baseline pressure is 80. So, immediately blood will eject into the aorta. Okay, the blood will eject into the aorta, sir. So, ventricular pressure is increasing from 81 to 120. Pressure is increasing. So, more blood flow will be there. More blood flow will be there. Almost during this rapid ejection phase, two thirds of stroke volume will be ejected. Two thirds of the stroke volume is ejected. Now, some students will have a doubt, sir. What is this stroke volume? What is this two third of the stroke volume, sir? We can't understand. I will explain. I will explain. Just remember, during rapid ejection phase, two thirds of stroke volume is ejected. What is that? I will explain. So, later on, what happens? Sir, after the apical contraction, now the base of the heart is going to contract. Still, heart is contracting. Still, heart is contracting, but the base of the heart is contracting. Apex contracted. Now, the base is getting contracted. During the basal contraction, Still contracting, but the pleasure, the pressure, okay, the pressure is going to come down. From 120, the pressure will come to 80. Okay, from 120, the pressure is coming down to 80, sir. Understood? So, the pressure is decreasing from 120 to 80. So, the amount of blood that's getting ejected, the amount of blood that's getting ejected also will be less. So, that's why it's called as slow ejection phase. So, rapid ejection phase occurs when the pressure is increasing from 81 to 120 mmHg. During this phase, two-thirds of the stroke volume is going to be ejected. So, during slow ejection phase, the pressure from 120, it will fall back to again 80, it's coming down. Okay. So, during this phase, only one-third of the stroke volume is going to be ejected. Okay. One-third of the stroke volume is going to be ejected. Okay. So, now, some guy is asking, Rama, you are saying 120 by 80, right? 
let me tell you sir when the heart is contracting the systol okay systol when the heart is contracting how much pressure it is generating 120 okay heart is generating a pressure of 120 you guys all know right sir our bp is 120 by 80 120 by 80 what is this 120 sir from where this 120 came sir when the heart is contracting not only the blood is coming into the aorta not only blood is coming but the pressure will also be transmitted right pressure will also be transmitted so that's 120 sir that's 120 so when the heart is contracting in the aorta you are going to have a pressure of 120 so during systole this is systolic bp systolic bp 120 i have asked you to remember from the beginning when the heart is not contracting not contract that is diastole during diastole what is the bp 80 so that's why 120 by 80 our bp is 120 by 80 because during systole the blood pressure is 120 during diastole the blood pressure in aorta is 80 120 by 80 okay 120 by 80 uh, now some issue with the air server right one minute one minute we'll connect it back again okay we'll connect it back again just let me scan this uh, one minute subscribe it subscribe that now it is visible right guys is it visible now okay i hope everything is visible guys just give me a confirmation now it is visible now is it visible afnan raj patidar rama Parha, Dinesh, is it visible? Yes, 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 yes. Okay, let's continue. Let's continue. So, what exactly is happening? What exactly is happening? The pressure is increasing from eighty to one twenty. From one twenty, the pressure is again coming back to eighty. Okay. So there is. Two phases: rapid ejection phase and slow ejection phase. During rapid ejection phase, two thirds of the stroke volume is ejected, and during slow ejection phase, one third of the stroke volume is ejected. Now, my question to you: What exactly is the stroke volume, sir? See how much you have filled with the filled in the ventricles. So you have filled uh, almost one twenty to one forty ml, right? That's the end diastolic volume or preload. How much you have filled? You have filled end diastolic volume. Okay, you have filled the end diastolic volume one twenty to one forty. When the ventricle is contracting. During rapid ejection phase or slow ejection phase, do you think everything will be going out? Do you think all one forty will go out? Do you think all one forty will go out? No, all one forty is not going out. See, you are having, you are having how much, sir? You are having one twenty to one forty ml of blood. When the ventricle is contracting, do you think all one twenty ml blood is going to enter into the aorta? No, sir. See, out of that one twenty, they go out of that one twenty, seventy will go out. Out of one twenty. 70 ml is ejected into aorta so this blood which is ejected into the aorta with one heartbeat with one heartbeat how much blood is ejected into aorta is called as stroke volume 70 is now called as stroke volume so now in this stroke volume even in that 70 ml even in this 70 ml look two third will be ejected during rapid ejection phase Two third of the stroke volume is ejected during the rapid ejection phase. 
one third of the stroke volume is ejected during the slow ejection phase. Okay, completed. So now come to the timeline diagram. This is the timeline. After isovolumetric contraction, there is a rapid ejection phase, right? So rapid ejection phase, the pressure is increasing from 81 to 120. 81 to 120. Sir, how much stroke volume is getting ejected? Two thirds. Two thirds of the stroke volume is getting ejected. Okay, two thirds of the stroke volume is getting ejected. Okay. Next. Next. So, what is this slow ejection phase? So, the, during the slow ejection phase, the pressure is going to go from 120 back to 80. The pressure is going back to 80. Okay. So, during the slow ejection phase, how much amount of stroke volume is going to be ejected? One third. Okay. One third of stroke volume is going to be ejected. Okay, you know what is the stroke volume? The stroke volume is 70, sir. The stroke volume is 70. Okay, if you ask me about the range of the stroke volume, if you talk, the range can be somewhere around 70 to 90. Okay, 70 to 90 can be the range. It can be somewhere between 70 to 90. Okay, so, sister, we have completed. In the sister, how many phases are there? Isovolumetric contraction, rapid ejection phase, and slow ejection phase. Now, tell me, first atria is contracted, right? Atrial contraction. Which heart sound is heard? Yes, 4 heart sound is heard. Now, during isovolumetric contraction at the beginning, in the beginning of the isovolumetric contraction, they go, there is S1 heart sound. Okay, there is S1 heart sound. Okay, and at the end of the isovolumetric contraction, there is ejection click. There is ejection click. After, once the aortic valve is open, once the aortic valve is open, after the ejection click, there is rapid ejection phase and slow ejection phase. Okay, next, after this, what I should teach you? Sir, in the beginning, in the beginning, how much blood is there in the ventricles? How much you have filled the ventricles, sir? How much you have filled the ventricles? Sir, I have filled the ventricles almost how much? 120 to 140 ml, 120 to 140 ml. That's the endastolic volume. That's the endastolic volume or preload. Now, when the ventricle is contracting, how much will come out? 70 ml will come out or the range 70 to 90 ml will come out. Okay. So, out of 120, if only 70 is coming out, how much is left over in the ventricle? Still, some is left over, right? How much is left over in the ventricle, sir? 50. 50 is left over. That 50 is called as systolic volume. Okay, that 50, they go. Sir, 50 is left over. This 50 is called as end systolic volume. We'll call it as end systolic volume, sir. Now, we are entering into the diastole, sir. We, we have completed this three. They go. Isovolumetric contraction, rapid ejection, slow ejection are completed. Now, let's talk about the diastolic phases. What is the first phase in the diastole? What is the first phase in the diastole? This is also completed. Uh, don't, don't forget. Proto-diastole. Now, we have to complete these phases. Proto-diastole. Let's complete it. Okay. Sir, what is the proto-diastole? See, now ventricle started to relax. Ventricle started to relax. Now, the pressure in the ventricle See, here it came to 80. During rapid ejection, slow ejection, now it came to 80. Now, the ventricle is relaxing. So, the ventricular pressure is going from 80 to 79. The ventricular pressure is decreasing by 1 mmHg, 80 to 79. Which means, now here they go, the ventricular pressure is less than the aortic pressure. Ventricular pressure is less than what? Aortic pressure. So, ventricular pressure is less than aortic pressure. When the ventricular pressure is less than the aortic pressure, what happens immediately to the wall? Sir, on the right and left side, aortic valve is going to close. On the right side, pulmonic valve is going to close. What happens? The closure of this aortic valve and pulmonic valve causes S2 heart sound. Okay, so in which phase you will hear this S2 heart sound, sir? In a phase called as protodiastole. Sir, in a phase called as protodiastole, the pressure in the ventricle will move, will fall from 80 to 79 when the ventricular pressures are less than the aortic pressures. Okay, when the ventricular pressures, when they are less than the aortic pressures, immediately aortic wall and pulmonic wall closes, causing H2 heart sound. That is A2P2. Aortic wall closes, pulmonic wall closes, causing H2 heart sound. A2P2. Okay, A2P2. So now, just read these points for me. The first stage, the protodiastole is the first stage of ventricular diastole. Diastole, it's the first stage, protodiastole. Where ventricular pressure falls 
from 80 to 79 true sir when ventricular pressure ventricle may okay when the ventricular pressure becomes less than the aortic and pulmonary artery pressure when the ventricular pressure is less than the aortic pressure or pulmonary artery pressure which wall closes semi lunar valve closes aortic valve and I aortic valve and pulmonic valve they will close creating which heart sound s2 heart sound okay creating the s2 heart sound right done done come to the timeline diagram let me show you the same thing look here the pressure is moving from say 80 to 79 this phase is called as protodiastole during protodiastole which heart sound is heard s2 heart sound is heard it is due to closure of a2p2 aortic valve pulmonic valve done done next come to our classification table they go sir protodiastole also completed let's mark it protodiastole b okay yeah cut them cut them okay so next after protodiastole what is the next phase in the diastole isovolumetric relaxation whenever you hear the word see they go here also isovolumetric isovolumetric means all valves are closed nothing is coming into the ventricles nothing is going out of the ventricles nothing is coming in nothing is going out of the ventricles so which means all valves are in a closed state so what is this isovolumetric relaxation so they look here isovolumetric relaxation now the aortic valve is closed these mitral valves and tricuspid valve they are lo closed long back s1 or the s1 heart so they are closed long back pulmonic valve is also closed aortic valve is also closed now what is happening ventricle is relaxing now we are in a diastole isovolumetric relaxation ventricle is relaxing ventricle is relaxing so the pressure from 79 it came to 70 to 50, 50 to 30, 32, 20, 20 to 10, 10 to 5. Now, listen. During this phase, when the ventricle is relaxing, what is happening in the atria? Sir, atria are filling with the blood. Atria, see they are receiving the blood, they are filling with the blood. Left atria is receiving the oxygenated blood. This is oxygenated blood from the lungs. From the lungs, left, left atria is receiving the blood oxygenated blood and this is the right atria right this is the right atria it is receiving which blood it is receiving the deoxygenated blood from superior vena cava and inferior vena cava this is the deoxygenated blood okay now my question to you is they go sir what is happening in isovolumetric relaxation simple during isovolumetric relaxation the pressure in the ventricle is decreasing the pressure in the ventricle is decreasing gradually all valves are in closed state. The atrioventricular valves and the semilunar valves are closed. Ventricular pressure is coming down. Coming down. Now, look. Here, the pressure in the ventricle, now it is coming to 5. Now, if the pressure is going to 4, for example, they go, now the pressure is becoming 4, sir. The pressure is becoming 4. Now, here in the left atria, do you know what is the pressure? 5. Here, the pressure is becoming 4. Now, do you know what happens? Sir, when the ventricular pressure, when it becomes less than ventricular pressure, if it becomes less than the atrial pressure, ventricular pressure is becoming less than the atrial pressure. Do you know what happens? Immediately this valve will open. Sir. Immediately the mitral valve and tricuspid valve, it will open. So now can you call it as isovolumetric relaxation now? Can you call this as isovolumetric relaxation? No, why? Because the new blood will fall down. No. Okay, that is not isovolumetric relaxation. So, tell me, one by one points. Look here. During isovolumetric relaxation, both AV valves, okay, that's the mitral valve and tricuspid valve, and semilunar valves, both AV valves and semilunar valves, are closed. Pressure inside the ventricles falls. Pressure is falling without any change in the volume of the blood. Without any change in the volume of blood. Same 50 ml is there. Nothing is coming in, nothing is going out. Next, once the pressure inside the ventricles, in ventricle may, once the pressure inside the ventricles, if they fall below the atrial pressures, if they fall below the atrial pressures, means here it is 5, here it is 4. Now, immediately which valves will open? The mitral valve and tricuspid valve will open. Okay, AV valves will open. So, once the AV valves are opened, sir, now it is no longer called as isovolumetric relaxation. Isovolumetric relaxation will be completed. So, opening of these valves, look, opening of these valves, 
will cause a sound do you know what is that opening snap opening of vitreal valve and tricuspid valve will cause a sound called as opening snap okay so thus whenever you hear opening snap okay thus whenever you hear opening snap it marks okay the end of this phase so this phase isovolumetric relaxation it ends by opening of av valves once the av valves are open vitreal valve and tricuspid valve once the vitreal valve and tricuspid valve once they are open then you will hear opening snap then you will hear opening snap okay once opening snap is heard isovolumetric relaxation is completed okay isovolumetric relaxation is completed okay done now tell me what is the next phase isovolumetric relaxation ho gaya let's see the same thing in the timeline diagram once look here sir here in isovolumetric relaxation the pressure from 79 where it is going let me write in a small way so 79 is going to 70 70 to 80 80 to for example 50 50 to 20 20 20 to 10 10 to 5 5 to 4 now the pressure is less than the atrial pressure now the ventricular pressure is less than the atrial pressure the atrial pressures are more when the atrial pressures are more immediately what you will hear you are going to hear the opening snap see now opening snap is heard sir so tell me isovolumetric relaxation is a phase present between sir isovolumetric relaxation it presents between s2 and opening snap isovolumetric relaxation it's present between which two heart sounds s2 and opening snap s2 is heard during which phase protodiastole protodiastole opening snap is because of what opening snap is because of opening of vitreal valve and tricuspid valve opening of vitreal valve and tricuspid valve now look here sir it's very simple now so this valves are opened mitral valve open tricuspid valve open the opening of this valves is going to cause which heart sound opening snap now in the beginning i have explained i have asked you something sir from where that 70% came see 30% of the blood is going to enter into the ventricle because of what because of because of atrial contraction because of the atrial contraction 30% of the blood is going to come into the ventricles from where 70% came now they go simple opening of this valves opening of this mitral valve and opening of this tricuspid valve opening of the mitral valve and tricuspid valve will allow 70% of blood into the ventricles 70% of the blood is going to come sir rapidly very rapidly just due to gravity blood will fall down into the ventricles so this is called as rapid ventricular filling rvf rapid ventricular filling so tell me any energy is involved in this process any muscle is getting contracted no so this rapid ventricular filling is what the rapid ventricular filling it is a passive okay opening of av valves opening of the av valves leads to rapid filling of the ventricles opening of av valves lead to rapid filling of the ventricles so this stage is passive passive when 70% of the blood is coming down into the ventricles when 70% of the blood is coming into the ventricles it will cause vibration in the wall of the ventricles sir it will cause little shakiness it will cause little vibration in the in the wall of the ventricle so we will hear a little heart sound that is called as s3 heart sound okay so this rapid inflow of blood vibrates the ventricular walls vibrates the ventricular walls causes third heart sound that is s3 causes s3 so usually in adults okay we hear s1 and s2 we can only hear s1 and s2 s3 s4 are not heard sir s3 s4 are not heard they are low pitch heart sounds they are low pitch heart sounds they are not heard okay but in children dekho in children you can hear this s3 is normally heard in children so s3 is physiological it's not pathological in children but in adult if you hear s3 that is pathological in some heart related pathologies you can hear the s3 heart sounds pathology that's a pathology okay so rapid ventricular filling is also completed rapid ventricular filling fills the ventricle 70% it's a passive it's a passive process okay it's a passive process next after rapid ventricular filling what is it? okay let me show you in the timeline diagram that thing sir here dekho see this is the rapid ventricular filling now during rapid ventricular filling are you able to appreciate there is a heart sound heard that is a s3 heart sound okay there is a s3 heart sound right during rapid ventricular filling 70% of ventricles are filled okay 70% of the ventricles are filled passively 
passively now general logically i am asking you after 70% filling completed now how much you have to fill later how much you have to fill sir after that we have to fill 30% that will occur in atrial systole 30% will occur in atrial systole simple that is active that is active okay but in between this rapid ventricular filling and atrial systole you will hear you will see a small phase there is a small phase which is called as diastasis so after right ventricular uh, sorry after rapid ventricular filling okay after rapid ventricular filling come to the classification so what we have completed so far we have completed the isovolumetric relaxation completed okay isovolumetric relaxation completed rapid ventricular filling is also completed 70% filling after that there is a very small phase sir small phase which is called as reduced filling also called as diastasis reduced filling or diastasis so what exactly happens in reduced filling or diastasis see reduced filling is reduced see what happens here look see reduced filling phase which is also called as slow filling phase okay slow filling phase or reduced filling phase reduced filling phase okay reduced filling phase sir. now what exactly happens here look try to understand try to understand now this is your atria this is your ventricle right right and this is the atria this is the ventricle okay now when the atrioventricular valves are open when the atrioventricular valves are open almost that 70% of the blood it have fall down into the ventricles fall down into the ventricles okay let me show you in the image format so that it will be helpful for you sir now this is your heart with the four chambers now this valves open the atrioventricular valves they are open sir now see what are these these are the pulmonary veins which are bringing the blood they are bringing the blood sir so the blood which is directly coming from this pulmonary veins sir this blood will fall directly into the ventricles okay so the blood directly is going to the blood which is coming from the pulmonary veins it will start to directly fall into the ventricles okay so that is called as slow filling phase slow filling phase okay no one will ask you about the slow filling phase much details but very see, first of all atria is not contracting ventricle is not contracting ventricle relax completely ventricle is relaxed so heart is not contracting and even not relaxing totally it is relaxed it's completely heart is relaxed even the blood flow within the heart the blood flow within the heart is also very very less so this is the best time so there is least cardiac motion heart is not moving it's a least cardiac motion there is a least cardiac motion so this is the best time to take the photos of the heart okay the echocardiography okay echo cardiac echo if you want to look at the heart abnormalities you will do the echocardiography so what is the best phase to visualize the heart the best phase to visualize the heart is echocardiography echocardiography okay so that's it so slow filling phase is also completed after the slow filling phase is slow filling phase is also called as diastasis it's also called as diastasis okay it's also called as diastasis after diastasis what will happen again atrial systole this is what we have already discussed we have already discussed this stuff. so at the end of the day i have discussed everything okay what are the phases in the systole three phases in the systole ivc isovolumetric contraction rapid ejection phase slow ejection phase what are the phases in the diastole protodiastole isovolumetric relaxation rapid ventricular filling diastasis and atrial systole sir s1 heart sound tell me s1 heart sound sir s1 heart sound is heard during isovolumetric contraction they go in the beginning of isovolumetric contraction s1 heart sound s2 heart sound is heard during sir s2 heart sound is heard during protodiastole okay protodiastole sir s3 heart sound is heard during rapid ventricular filling s4 heart sound is heard during atrial systole atrial systole now if someone asks you which heart sound comes before s1 it's a cycle it's a cycle right which heart sounds come before s1 s4 s4 after atrial systole after atrial systole who will come again s1 sir s1 okay during isovolumetric contraction you will hear s1 sir so which heart sound is preceded before s1 which heart sound okay let me put it this way sir which heart sound comes before s1 s4 or which heart sound comes after s4 s1 okay simple okay simple sir now 
which heart sounds are high pitch heart sounds s1 and s2 are normal s3 and s4 heart sounds s3 and s4 heart sounds are not normal they are low pitch heart sounds they are not heard usually they are not heard okay they are not heard usually okay now systole is present between tell me systole is present between which two heart sounds systole is a phase which is present between s1 and s2 systole is present between s1 and s2 so diastole is present between diastole is present between s2 and s1 diastole is present between s2 and s1 okay so diastole between s2 and s1 systole between s1 and s2 okay completed sir completed now i will ask you some questions you just try to answer them 70% of the ventricles occurs during 70% of the ventricles occurs during rapid ventricular filling that is active or passive passive 30% of the filling occurs during okay 30% of the ventricles 30% of the ventricle filling occurs during atrial systole that's active process that's active process so during which phase okay during which phase the aortic valve and pulmonic valve are closed aortic and pulmonic valve a2 p2 aortic valve and pulmonic valve are closed okay aortic and pulmonic valve during which phase aortic valve and pulmonic valve are closed a to p to dekho creating s2 heart sound during proto diastole okay during proto diastole okay during proto diastole a to p to are closed okay and during which phase the m1 t1 mitral valve and tricuspid valve are closed in the beginning of isovalvetric contraction the beginning of isovalvetric contraction when the ventricle started to contract when the ventricle started to contract immediately the mitral valve and tricuspid valve are closed creating s1 heart sound is one heart sound maximum stroke volume is ejected during tell me maximum stroke volume is ejected during sir maximum stroke volume is ejected during sir uh, which phase maximum stroke volume is ejected during rapid ejection phase two thirds of the stroke volume two thirds of the stroke volume okay after you are saying ibc no during isovalvular ventricular contraction ventricle is still contracting we just ventricular is ventricle is contracting just increasing the pressure okay just increasing the pressure during rapid ejection phase riya saying raj patel yes true yes after you are true okay so during rapid ejection phase may more stroke volume two thirds two thirds of the stroke volume okay now after this after the cardiac cycle okay that, that's enough sir if you know this much you know in and out okay all the phases of the cardiac cycle systolic phases and diastolic phases all heart sounds s1 s2 s3 s4 you know about the ejection click you know about the opening snap okay so read this topic again one more time okay again watch the video again and again sir so that you will have you see this thing should be there in your mind every time the entire cardiac cycle should be imprinted in your mind very important topic all heart sounds you should know you should know after this a small one law i will tell you okay look here so there is a law called as frag starlings law so a kya hai what exactly is the frank starling law okay frank starling law sir okay frank starling is not the darling it's a starling okay it's a starling frank starling law so what is that what exactly is this frank starling law so end diastolic volume is directly proportional to stroke volume if you increase the end diastolic volume stroke volume also increases heart is like a rubber band your heart is like a rubber band the more you stretch the heart the more powerful it will contract the more you stretch the heart the more powerful it will contract the same way if you put more blood into the heart see you are putting more blood into the heart that is increase preload or increase end diastolic volume you are increasing the end diastolic volume or you can say you are increasing preload okay you are increasing the preload preload and diastolic volume same word same things okay now if you put more blood into the heart heart is going to stretch more if you are stretching the heart more more powerful it will contract more powerful it will contract okay for example you will understand see you will understand see what is the normal end diastolic volume kavan raj patel afnan riya singh prince panchal rama jainam ramani can you tell me sir what is the normal end diastolic volume edv come on let me see who can answer first what is the normal end diastolic volume sir normal volume how much you will put into the heart 
Come on, guys. How much will we are going to put into the heart? Oh, there is a little delay. Okay, anyway, anyway, no issue. Uh, we are going to put 122, 140 ml. Okay, for example, let's say we are keeping 120 ml, sir. Okay, you are saying you are keeping, yes. Yes, yes, excellent, excellent. You are keeping 120 ml of the bread. So, if you put 120 ml of the bread, how much will be the stroke volume? 70 ml. Uh, 70 to 90 ml will come out. Okay, 70 to 90 ml will come out. For example, instead of 120, I am keeping 240 ml of blood. 240 ml, for example, are simple, like, you know, why should, why to, like, put so much? Simple. I am keeping, now, 190 ml. So, I am keeping 190 ml. Now, what I have done? I have increased the preload. I have increased the preload. I have increased the endastolic volume. Sir, if I increase the endastolic volume, if I increase the endastolic volume, what should happen to the stroke volume? Do you think same 70 ml will come out? No, sir. Now, instead of 70 ml, now 150 ml or 140 ml will come out. 140 ml will come out, sir. Means, if you increase the endastolic volume, see, if you increase the endastolic volume, automatically stroke volume also increases. This law is called as Frank Starling law. Okay, Frank Starling law. The more you put into the heart, the put more blood into the heart, heart will contract more powerfully to eject more blood out. To eject more blood out. This is called as Frank Starling law. Okay, so you know the preload. Sir, what exactly is this preload? Preload is nothing but the amount of blood. It's nothing but the amount of blood. Okay, how much is there? 120 or 140? That's called as a preload, sir. Okay, that's called as a preload. Done. So, most of the students, even the MBBS, most of the students, they know what is preload. They know what is preload. But they don't know what is afterload, sir. They don't know what is afterload. If there is preload, there should be also afterload. There should be also afterload. So, what is this afterload? Now, here I am drawing only the left ventricle. Thing. So, this is the left ventricle. I am showing you. This is the left ventricle. So, this is what? Iota. Here is Iota. What is this wall, sir, which I am showing you over here? So, what is this wall that I am showing you? That is aortic wall. So, this is aortic wall. Okay. Now, normally aortic wall is in closed state. Okay, let us put it this way. Aortic wall is in closed state. It is closed. What is the pressure here in the aorta? 80. Now, if the pressure in the aorta is 80, how much left ventricle have to generate? How much left ventricle have to generate? So, left ventricle have to generate a pressure of 81 to open that wall. For example, if the pressure in the aorta is 150, for example, the pressure in the iota is 150 mmHg. Now, how much the left ventricle have to generate? So, left ventricle to open that iotic wall, to open that iotic wall, the left ventricle have to generate 151, 151. If here, the pressure is 200, the left ventricle have to generate a pressure of 201. So, what is afterload, sir? Afterload is kya hai? The amount of, the amount of pressure generated by the left ventricle, the amount of pressure generated by the left ventricle to open the aortic wall, the pressure required by the left ventricle to open that aortic wall, to open that aortic wall is called as afterload, okay, afterload, okay, the pressure generated by the left ventricle to open that aortic wall is called as afterload, okay, this is the normal afterload, See here, the afterload is increasing. 151, 201, the afterload is more. Okay. So, the pressure required, the pressure required to open the aortic wall is called as afterload. So, I have explained preload. Preload is nothing but the blood. The blood, the amount of blood you are putting into the heart, that's a preload. Okay. It's nothing but the blood. What is afterload? Afterload is a pressure. Afterload is a pressure. Pressure required by the left ventricle to open the aortic wall. Okay. That's the afterload. Sir. That's the afterload. So, I have explained preload, I have explained afterload, I have explained Frank Starling's law. Also, I have explained all the eight phases in the cardiac cycle. In detail, I have explained all, with all the heart songs. Okay, so the topic is completed. The cardiac cycle topic is completed. Okay, so I hope the class is helpful. Okay, if you have any doubts, you can always message me on my WhatsApp number. Hope the class is helpful. See you in the next class. Okay, see you in the next class, guys. Okay, so bye bye for today. Tata, bye bye. See you in the next class. Okay, guys, bye bye. Okay, let me stop this.